Hey guys, it's Biggs, welcome back. Today I got something rather unique for you. You'd be saying, it's not only unique, you'd think it's almost stuff from an alien world. I'm taking you, I'm gonna take you to a friend's house. I found him on Marketplace. He had a couple of unique plants. I thought, whoa, gotta jump on these right away before these babies are gone. And I jumped on them, sent him a message, and then we hooked up the following week and I was able to go pick them up. And he invited me in to see what he does. And this guy grows some incredible plants some incredibly bizarre plants, some incredibly unique plants, and he does it all on his windowsill. So, I hope you guys will join me. Let's go take a peek. All right guys, I'm sitting here today. I told you guys we're gonna be going and seeing somebody really cool, showing you off something really, really neat. I'm sitting here with my, my, my new friend, Remy, and uh, you guys gotta see some of the stuff that this guy's doing. He's doing, he's, he's pushing the boundaries and he's doing things that everybody told him you can definitely not do. So thanks a lot for having me, Remy. I think this is, this, this is outstanding. I'm absolutely blown away. I, I've kept some of these plants, as I mentioned earlier, you know, for, for many, many years, but I wasn't expecting to see this. Certainly not some of the ones of the size that you have here or the diversity of the stuff that you have here. So tell us your story, how you got started in this. Uh, I've been starting cannabis plants since I'm 16. Uh, I'm 40 something now. Uh, but I, when I immigrate from France to Canada, I decided to only focus on uh, in-house cannabis plants, the Nepenthes the tropical pitcher plant, because uh, here in Manitoba, uh, outside during winter, there is not a lot that could survive. All the Venus flytrap, all the Saracenia, they would just freeze to death. So um, I decided to do them, the Nepenthes, on my windowsill and to prove that, no, you, you, it's not challenging, it's not hard, it's not harder, more complex than an orchid, if you provide a good um, care uh, and you understand what they need they will just uh, work great and you don't have to have like all the other youtuber uh, humidity chamber greenhouse terrarium no on a window seal it's possible and i've been focusing on trying to spread the word like the diversity of stuff you have here is absolutely incredible and you're not just growing now nepenthes they, these might not be more common like a lot of people might not know what nepenthes are and they'll see in the videos and stuff the stuff that we're sharing but these are the tropical pitcher plants, as you mentioned. Yeah, exactly. And so most of these are all, where do they all come from? Uh, Philippine, Philippine, Borneo, all these kind of, uh, okay. there is some in India too. So uh, very tropical, usually hot and humid, but they also grow in the mountain where it's humid and cold. So yeah. they are. And you're growing a bit of both. So you've got the, what they call the lowland ones, and those are the ones that, like you say, grow warm. Mm -hmm. And then there's also ones that are intermediate that go a little bit cooler. Mm -hmm. And those work, both of those we could do indoors without question in most homes. It will very depend on your windows. Here in Manitoba, it's more challenging. So I'm more intermediate, and I can even go to island, the one that like it's cold, uh, like 14 degrees Celsius at night. I can't go that cold. <laughs> <laughs> on the window seal, it sometimes it can be very cold, even if you run the 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 furnace. But depending of where you live, clearly intermediate will work, and uh, you can choose for uh, lowland or island. And um, so that's always interesting to see that you can find the proper plants for your proper condition. How did you even get into this? It's like we're downstairs, you've done a bit of fish, you've dabbled in a bunch of stuff, but what, what really drew you to this specific, because this is very specific. You have a few other unique carnivorous plants that we'll show, we'll talk about, but like you are pretty much invested in this one genre of plants. Why them? Ah, um, because they, I had a small one when I was 16 and uh, I, it was growing on the windowsill, but uh, I killed it quite quickly, three were three <laughs> years, I guess, because of the lack of information. And then I, I went into a forum, it was before Facebook, and uh, asking questions about uh, how to grow them to other growers. And then a lot of information was shared. I learned, I tried, I failed, I tried again, I, and then I succeed. And everything was really interesting and I, I was getting better and better at, at it. But when I was talking to other growers, 
they were all telling me, no, it's not possible. You cannot grow Nepenthes without a terrarium, a greenhouse. Uh, so it was frustrating when I immigrated four years ago into uh, Canada. It was almost the same. It's not like, no, it's not very good. They, they won't thrive. They will uh, vegetate and die. And so I decided, yes, I will, I will show my way of doing it. I don't know, to spread this knowledge and that's a, a fun journey. Yeah, and you just started a YouTube channel not even a year ago and you're, you've already, you're skyrocketing already, but it's also because of the knowledge that you're portraying in it. And this is definitely not something that we would have normally ever encounter in Manitoba. You would walk <laughs> into somebody's house and expect to see this little shop of horrors, but here you are doing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, uh, in Manitoba, we have a lot of sunny days, so for the window seal, that's great. And if you add just a little bit of grow light, they can clearly thrive here. All right, Remy, I can tell that this one's not an Nepenthes. What are we looking at now? So this one is a pinguicula. Uh, that's a Mexican pinguicula. So the leaves get uh, sticky, and as you see, there is uh, some fungus gnat on it. And it's working very nicely on windowsill because it enjoys the fact that the light, the daylight will change from winter to summer. And usually they will flower all um, winter and then they will uh, start becoming again carnivorous and they will just continue doing. The leaves during winter are um, succulent, so thicker and no longer carnivore. So uh, that's an interesting way of um, growing these plants. They are not looking the same depending on the season. So seasonally they're going to look dirty. <laughs> <laughs> kind of, kind of. But these things are great. Like with me, keeping those isopods and uh, my wife, it drives her crazy that I got these little fungus gnats in the house. Oh, yeah. The more methods of controlling those is good. So this is your basic setup for your most of your Nepenthes. Yes, you know? most of my Nepenthes grow uh, on the window seal. Uh, that's, again, the, the, the purpose of this channel, to show that, uh, yes, they are doing great. Uh, I have grow light for winter. These windows face south? Yes. Yeah. Three south, we have north. And west, so yeah, you have uh, windows. All this whole upstairs is all windows, all the way around. Yeah, that's the best yeah. <laughs> room in the house. Yeah. My favorite room, uh, cozy to. <laughs> so you only need the supplemental lights, and they're little LED lights. You use those in the winter time only, when the the light level is a little bit lower. The first three year, I didn't have them, uh, but the plants were slowing down during the winter because of the lack of light. So my plan here is to keep this 12 hour of light and just adding this uh, this light maybe four hour in the morning and four hour in the evening no supplemental light exactly yeah. just to make sure the daylight stay the same so they are grow light but for now they run maybe an hour in the morning and an hour in the evening so it's really just to extend yeah because that area that they would come from the, the photo period would be the same all the time because exactly. they're right at the equator, yeah. right? And even during winter, maybe the temperature get lower 5 degrees, so it's really yeah. not uh, used to have a short daytime, cold. So, but even without that, as you see, the, this one uh, didn't have the grow light the last three years and it's doing just great. We have, um, what can I show you? I have this new one. So, they are not that big for now, but they will get uh, bigger every time. This one would be an intermediate? Yes. That's what would a, be the species? Or is this a hybrid? Oh, that's an hybrid. The, for the window seal, hybrid will tend to do better because, again, they, they are stronger. They take the best of the two parents. This one will be Maxima by Talagensis. Um, Maxima. Very striking. Yeah. Maxima is really uh, an easy plant for beginners and you see here we have another one that will come soon so if there's any plant on our planet that looks alien i would say these are them so for nepenthes there is a few parts of the plants that you have to know you already know the leaves then there is this kind of a tendril that's a tendril that's a, a an extension of the leaves the very one that come from the center and at the very end, you will have this embryo. So this embryo is the one that um, have to stay around 50% humidity 
to produce the picture. And you have different stage. This one, for example, you see that it's already starting to be bigger. And then that's the same species of this one. Later, it will be that size. And these plants would have, in the wild, these plants would generally have pictures year round, just continuously. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, that's why I added these uh, grow lights because uh, during winter, they were slowing down. Uh, less light, less power, I guess, so less picture. And the whole purpose of carnivorous plants is to have them carnivorous. Yeah. So <laughs> that's... And what do you do for, for potting media? And what do you do for, say, uh, you know, obviously you don't have to feed them. <laughs> you don't have to feed them, uh, but uh, quick tips, if you want to feed them, you can put some um, fish food pellet on the pitcher and they will uh, just digest it. Don't... Um, Less is better. If you put too much uh, food, they will uh, rot. So just uh, one pellet every uh, week or two weeks, that's enough to give this the boost. They don't need to feed it, they just uh, benefit. And for the substrates, mainly you will see the top dressing that's live, sphagnum, but uh, because I spray, so the, the sphagnum stay moist and uh, it's always um, healthy. If I was not spraying, dead sphagnum and perlite would work. Um, that's exactly what is under, actually. Under this live sphagnum, you will have perlite and uh, sphagnum. Just mixed. Yeah. Yeah. So the perlite gives the drainage and the sphagnum retains the moisture. Exactly. You can um, even go with peat moss, but uh, as they are not bog plants, they live in the forest. Some are really epiphyt so they they would prefer very very drained media so um, it's always the, the way to go if it's too damp like you would have for saracenia and uh, swamp uh, the roots will die and rot and you will have problems so more drainage some it's 50 50 perlite and sphagnum so that's and you see the the pot they are net pot so again uh, Same way that people used to do for orchids. Exactly. Yeah. That's why they, they are interesting. And this picture, for me, will, will last maybe six months. And it's shooting all the time new pictures. So uh, it's like having the, the flower of the orchid all years uh, round. And um, to a different kind. Again, you see the different shape. Some are striped. Some have uh, teeth. Maybe I will show you this one. I don't know if you can zoom in. I will put that here. Well, it's got the little hairs all over it. Yeah. So yeah, they, they are absolutely fascinating. And they don't look all the same, so that's why. Well, no, I think I think you've opened our eyes. This is an entirely new alien world. <laughs> and as you've proven, you know, uh, you know, people can follow you on your channel as well. You've proven that this is easy to do. This can be done. Yeah in a windowsill, as you're doing in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. <laughs> yes, exactly. No, thank you very much, Remy. Hope you guys opened your eyes a little bit, guys. Go check his channel out. The link will be in the description.